Hey guys, Adam here with Rock Crawler Suspension. Today we're gonna to talk about the new version of crawler joints, the Pro-X joints, uh, and some of how you can update your current joints at home to take advantage of some of the things we've learned and we've, we've put into production here. So one of the big changes you're gonna see between a new style housing and an old style housing is the absence of a grease groove in the new style housing. And we had, you know, it's, it's no secret, we had, uh, an issue with a, a vendor that drove us to relook at how we've designed these joints over the years and what changes we can make to ensure stuff like that never happens again. Um, one of the things we did was we went to a, a one-piece bushing and with that one-piece bushing we've introduced a way for grease to travel directly to the ball rather than, than a channel that flowed around the bushing uh, into the housing. So with that uh, we're going to show you today how to fill in the grease groove so that your old housings will look just like a new housing and, and function just like a new housing. And in doing so, this will allow you to run uh, the newer one-piece style bushings in an older housing without any issues, without any bushing fatigue. So the Permatex liquid metal filler is what we found is the best thing to fill in those grease grooves and not have any pockets of air, uh, super easy, no mixing chemicals. You could use like a JB weld if you wanted to, but this stuff's super easy, really quick cure time um, and get right back to running those joints again. So that's, that's the stuff you wanna use on this. The brake clean will help you get a surface that's really, really clean. Um, so that this bonds very well to it. And then a razor blade just helps you to, to, I don't know, we'll show you. The razor blade will help you clean out any excess. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your joint clean. Obviously yours has probably been in a vehicle for a while, it's been greased before, it's been driven. So you're gonna wanna take a little bit of brake clean and just get in the grease groove a little bit. Doesn't take much, watch your eyes. It burns if you get it in there. And just get a little bit of brake clean and clean out that grease groove so that you get good adhesion with the liquid metal filler in here. And once you've got that good and clean, you go ahead and take the, uh, the liquid metal filler and just gently roll it into the grease groove here. And it's okay if you gotta pause in the middle and adjust your hands on how you wanna do this, but just get it in there and a little bit of buildup's fine. We're gonna scrape that away afterwards. And then once we've got that there, the camera makes this a really awkward position for me, but we make it happen. So what you end up with is a nice bead all the way around and you'll notice this product skins over really quickly. So we'll give it just a couple minutes to skim over and then I'll show you what it looks like and we'll scrape it clean. So from here, you'll wanna take a razor blade and use the razor blade to scrape off any excess inside the housing. And you'll probably have to do this in a couple passes and that's okay. But if you take a razor blade and just keep it tight along the housing, it'll scrape off any excess. Wipe the razor blade off on a rag and then continue on scraping any excess out of here. So as you go, you'll wanna watch that you keep as much filler out of the threads as possible. If you do get some in, not a big deal. You can take it out with a dental pick, but you wanna keep it out of the grease screw or out of the, the zerk hole and out of the threads for the retainers as much as you can. Once you've got it scraped down pretty well, take a look at it and inspect and see if you've got, you know, good coverage. So from here, you're gonna have a nice filled in and it should be smooth uh, grease groove here. Um, you wanna double check there's no uh, liquid metal filler in the zerk hole. You wanna double check there's no liquid metal filler in any of the, the threaded retainer areas. If there is, go ahead and take this time, use a dental pick or something similar, maybe the end of your razor blade and clean those threads out. Uh, because they're gonna hurt you during the reassembly process, maybe give you a false torque reading, things like that. But as long as those are clean, 
the instructions on the on the liquid metal filler say three to four hours let it cure obviously it's going to depend on you know your environment if you're in a really humid or more cold area take a little bit longer the hotter the drier it is the faster that's going to cure when you're rebuilding a new style crawler joint some of the components you're going to see are, are the retainers, the housings, the balls, and the joint raceways. To put this all together, we're going to give you kind of a quick overview uh, and show you how to get everything set up and ready to run. One of the big improvements you're going to see on the Pro X crawler housings, the newer style housings, um, is that on the retainer we created a, a radius mill flat rather than the older flat mill flat. This enables you to reassemble without any Loctite and in current production, we're not using Loctite on these, which makes the rebuild process that much easier later, later down the road. Uh, that gives a positive lock on the joint. The radius is matched to the set screw um, and, it, and it clicks in like a tapered end. Um, so much, much tighter, better design there. So on the Pro X crawlers, one of the things you'll see that's different than the way it used to be is we're a single piece raceway as opposed to the old two piece raceways. Some of the things you'll see different is that there's a radius edge on one side and a square edge on the other. There is a single grease hole in it. And inside, if you look closely, there are grease grooves that carry grease around the ball. Uh, when you go to install these on the ball, you'll want to take the square edge rather than the radius edge and put that over the ball first. Uh, beforehand, you want to put a, a thin layer of grease around the bushing. We don't have grease in the media room here, so you're just going to have to pretend with me. If, after you do that, what I use is an old uh, large crawler joint tool that I cut the ears off of, but you can use a large socket, what have you, and you just square it up over the bushing and give it a good push and it snaps right into place for you. From there, you want to set one of your retainers into the housing and screw it down so that, that retainer sits just about flush with the outside of the housing. From there, find the grease hole on the housing and find the grease hole in the bushing. And you wanna line those right up so that when you do put a Zerk fitting in here and you're gonna flow grease, that they go right together. After you get this squared up, it should drop right into the housing for you. It helps to have a small arbor press, but once you get everything lined up, it goes in pretty nicely. So once you've got your bushing pressed in far enough, double check that you can see through the Zerk hole and into the ball right through the bushing, and then grab your other retainer and start screwing it in. Um, now with these large crawler joints, which are anything that is one inch shank, inch and a quarter shank or inch and three eighths shank, you're gonna tighten these retainers to 30 foot pounds. Uh, once they hit 30 foot pounds on one side, flip it over, tighten the other, and then advance until the next available mill flat engages with the set screw. And you can, with the new uh, Pro X crawler retainers, you can see the mill flat very easily and you want to make sure those line right up with each other. Uh, with the smaller crawler joints, which are anything with a three quarter inch shank or a seven eighths shank, the torque spec on those retainers is 25 foot pounds, but same thing, do one side, do the other side, advance the mill flats until they engage, or advance the retainer until the mill flat engages, and you're all set, they're ready to run.